Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Siddharth Yadav. I'm an assistant professor of oncology at Mayo Clinic and today we'll be discussing one of our recently published studies in the Journal of the National Cancer Institute, JNCI. The title of our study is The Contributions of Germline Predisposition Gene Mutations to Clinical Subtypes of Invasive Breast Cancer from a Clinical Genetic Testing Cohort. This study was a collaboration between Amri Genetics and the Mayo Clinic. Dr. Chungling Hu, one of my colleagues, is the first author of this study and Dr. Fergus Couch is the senior author on this study. When we think of breast cancer, I think it is important to recognize that breast cancer is not one disease, but there are different clinical subtypes of breast cancer defined by the estrogen receptor status progesterone receptor status and the HER2 receptor status. The treatments and the clinical outcomes also differ by these clinical subtypes. In the past, majority of studies that looked at germline predisposition to breast cancer lumped all of these clinical subtypes together. However, we are at a point now where we need to look at these subtypes separately. What I mean by that is that there is an increasing interest to know germline mutations in which genes predispose to estrogen receptor positive breast cancer versus triple negative breast cancer. In order, in order to answer questions like these, we have performed one of the largest studies to date looking at all of these clinical subtypes separately. In this study, we evaluated approximately 55,000 women with breast cancer who underwent germline genetic testing at Amri Genetics. The majority of women in this cohort had estrogen receptor positive HER2 negative breast cancer. We had approximately 25,000 with ER positive HER2 negative breast cancer, approximately 10,000 women with triple negative breast cancer, and roughly 9,000 women with HER2 positive breast cancer. In this cohort, we found that 10.1% of women carried a germline mutation in one of the 15 cancer predisposition genes. As expected, women with triple negative breast cancer had the highest rate of germline mutations at 14%. For other clinical subtypes of breast cancer, the rates of germline mutations ranged between 7 and 9%. Germline mutations in ATM, BRCA, 2 and CHECK2 were most frequent, occurring in more than 1% of women with estrogen receptor positive HER2 negative and estrogen receptor positive HER2 positive breast cancer. BRCA1 mutations were most frequent in women with triple negative breast cancer and ER negative HER2 positive breast cancer. We also performed case control analysis looking at the frequency of germline mutations in each gene in our cohort and comparing those to frequency of germline mutation in the same gene from general population in NOMAD. By performing these kinds of analysis, we are able to identify mutations in which genes predispose to which clinical subtype of breast cancer. We found that mutations in BRCA1, BRCA2, and PALB2 were associated with all clinical subtypes of breast cancer. Germline mutations in TP53 gene was also associated with all clinical subtypes of breast cancer, but the effect was most prominent for HER2 positive breast cancer. ATM gene mutations, on the other hand, was associated with all clinical subtypes of breast cancer except triple negative breast cancer. Mutations in CHECK2 were associated with estrogen receptor positive breast cancers only. Furthermore, we also found that uh, mutations in BAR1, BRIP1, RAD51C, and RAD51D were associated with triple negative breast cancer subtype only. This study demonstrates that the frequency of germline mutations in breast cancer predisposition genes are different by different clinical subtypes and also that uh, mutations in certain genes may have a higher predisposition for a particular clinical subtype of breast cancer. Why is this important? 
So we have to think of two categories of women where this might be relevant. First, women who already have breast cancer and are being referred for germline genetic testing. Second, women who are found to be carriers of germline mutations but do not have breast cancer yet. Among women who already have breast cancer, I think it is important that we ensure that the germline, the mutations that are more frequent in, their, in that particular clinical subtype are included for testing. For instance, in women who have estrogen receptor positive breast cancer, I think we should ensure that they are being tested for BRCA2, ATM, and CHECK2, in addition to several other genes. Now in today's day and age, in the United States at least, majority of women undergo multi-gene panel testing. And a lot of the genes that we are talking about today are all already included as part of those panels. So this may not be as relevant. However, I think uh, it is still important to ensure that the panel that we are recommending includes all of these genes that are more prevalent in the clinical subtype that, of breast cancer that they have. In the second category of women, that is women who are known to be germline mutation carriers but do not have breast cancer, our study provides estimates for specific subtype of breast cancer that they are at risk for. For instance, women who are known to be germline mutation carriers of ATM or CHECK2 are at increased risk of developing estrogen receptor positive breast cancer rather than triple negative breast cancer. Similarly, women who are known to be BARD1, um, RAD51C or RAD51D mutation carriers are at increased risk of triple negative breast cancer. Now this distinction is important because the current guidelines do not take subtype specific risks into account when discussing management of uh, risk in germline mutation carriers. And our hope is that uh, the guidelines will incorporate uh, the subtype specific uh, breast cancer risk in the future. The findings of this study will be helpful for women with uh, breast cancer undergoing germline genetic testing by providing them with a better estimate of the risk of carrying germline mutations in each of the breast cancer predisposition genes. In addition, among women who are found to be carriers of germline mutations, the findings of this study may guide subtype-specific uh, breast cancer risk assessment and allow for fine-tuning of the risk management decisions. Ultimately, we hope that this will result in more personalized approach to germline genetic testing and breast cancer risk assessment. Thank you for listening.